How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create this logo transition effect. It's kind of like a uh, pixel scan or glitch effect. It's really cool. So the way it's gonna work is gonna be done all in the shader nodes. We're gonna be harnessing transparency, mixing some uh, gradients and four node textures and transitioning to them with a lot of different things in this really relatively simple, but really good node tree. Um, you're gonna learn some really cool things about this if you never use transparency or some of these systems are really, really useful when making things like this. So a lot of really cool things in this tutorial. We will get into that that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with Eevee and Cycles. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. Real-time materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. All right, so this is the effect we're gonna be creating right here. And this specific project file, it's gonna be available on Patreon. There's a lot of really cool things on my Patreon, uh, tutorials and materials and stuff. It's really kind of my MoGraph hub. So you can check that out in the description if you want. Uh, let's go ahead and get in a new uh, folder here. So we'll get new, general, and we're not gonna save that. Now, uh, with this, we're using a logo, but anything goes. So if you don't have your own logo or don't really wanna take the time to turn your logo into an SVG or just using text, you, I would really just encourage you, go ahead, shift A and get a circle, uh, switch that over to Ingon or Triangle Fan and just use this as your logo. Any geometry works for this effect because it is shader nodes. Um, the flatter, the better, really. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and delete that. And I'm going to import my YouTube logo. Uh, it's going to be an SVG format. So I'm going to click on SVG, and I'm going to go to my desktop, and we're going to get the YouTube logo here. And then I'm going to just highlight it, scale it up. I'm going to delete this middle one, even though I used it in my original animation. Just for the sake of tutorial, we don't need it. And then if you're using an SVG, the anchor point's usually gonna be right here. So I'm gonna hit tab and hit A to select everything. And then I'm gonna hit the tilde key and go to the top, and G, and then just get that anchor point. So that little green thing for you might be orange. Um, I just changed my theme. But get your anchor point in the middle. And I'm gonna hit RX 90. Now we're ready. And I'm just gonna kind of bring it up a little bit. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over here to the uh, material section and I'm gonna hit the delete button, or the minus button. Click new, and this is gonna be the new material that's gonna have all the glitching stuff on it. So we're gonna head straight into shading. So I'm gonna move this over here, hit the period key, and let's go ahead and create magic. All right, so we're gonna bring the world opacity over here. Click on the camera icon, and we're gonna go here to Eevee and just hit these guys here. That's gonna make it work properly, but we're gonna stay here just so it looks nice. Let's go ahead and delete this principled, and we're gonna get a mix shader and plug that here. Now let's go ahead and get in a uh, transparent node, plug that here on the bottom and let's get in a emission node to plug that here on the top. Move this up and we're gonna need to get a color ramp and we'll plug this here and let's get a gradient. Now, if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, comes with Blender by default, I'm gonna hit Control T with that gradient texture uh, turned on, and we're just gonna have, we're gonna use the object coordinate here. Now we're gonna have this. So first, let's go ahead and click on the logo, hit Control A and apply that scale. That's gonna make everything work properly proportionally. So if you use this X location here, you can see this big, this black section here, that's transparency, that's not working. Uh, what you need to do here in Eevee is click on the little material icon right here on blend mode, go to alpha clip. Now, sometimes you can use alpha blend depending on what you need to do. Since it's just gonna be flat, alpha clip does some work for us in terms of the color ramp. So now we're here. Let's go ahead and now distort this further to create the glitch effect. So let's go ahead and we're gonna hit um, a uh, VOR, Voronoi texture, put that there. We're gonna go from 3D to 4D, F1 to F2, and then we're gonna bring that randomness all the way to the left and now you can see this working. If you play with this X location, it's actually its own transition effect, actually. It's really cool. What we're gonna do here, though, is we're gonna play with the W until the uh, it creates that pixel look. 
there we go, that's working. And if you say, oh, I wanna make these squ uh, squares bigger. Well, now it doesn't look like that anymore. We'll play with that W and it will bring it back. Um, so just play with the W and the scale, make them meet to get that pixel look or do whatever you want. At this point, it's up to your creativity. It doesn't have to be a pixel look. It could be any texture you want. Um, and now we're gonna get a mapping node, hit Shift D and bring that over here. Put that zero. This mapping node is gonna control the Voronoi. This mapping node is gonna control the gradient. So mapping to the right, mapping to the right, controls the guy to the right. Now, how do we uh, create this? Again, this creates a really cool transition effect by itself, if you wanna just do that. But we're, we need to get in a mix color. So mix color, plug it here. And then we're gonna get an object, plug object into B. So let me show you what this is gonna do if you've never done this. You can see now it's, uh, behaving the way we want, but why is it doing that? So I'm gonna hit shift, right click, and uh, just format this so we can visually see what's happening. This mix allows it to bypass. So if we bring the factor over to the right, it bypasses these guys. It's like they don't exist. Bring the factor over to the left, it's like we don't have this guy here. It's just them affecting it totally. So this will actually show how wide the glitch effect, the glitch transition will be working for you. It's really nice. So now we have the whole thing working properly. Now what we need to do is get our color. So bring the transparent guy over here. We don't need to touch him. We need to actually play with this. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna get a mix shader and hit Shift D on that mix shader. And then we're also gonna hit Shift D on this emission. And we're gonna bring the color to our YouTube red, even though it doesn't look proper. Oh, that's because it's uh, it's mixing. So even though I know that's not the real YouTube hex, you can get that if you'd like. All right, so here we go. We need to go ahead and get a few color ramps here. We need to get a color ramp for this factor. So let's get, we're just gonna hit Shift D, duplicate the color ramp um, here, but actually we're just gonna cut him and plug the color ramp into this top emission material. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just do a little bit of organizing. I'm gonna hit G to move everything over so it looks nice. And then maybe we bring these guys up a little bit. All right, so let's plug the gradient texture into this color ramp. And now it's gonna to start to look really nice. What we need to do is hit this drop down on here, right here and go to uh, constant. And that's gonna allow us to color everything. So let's bring it to maybe once it starts to color these inlets, something like this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get three colors. So these are our three colors. We're gonna make this white one. We're gonna just make it pure red. We're gonna get this one to be green and this one to be blue. All right, so as you can see, that's yellow and purple. It's because these colors are mixing within this factor here. It's not working properly. That's why we need to get this color ramp here. So plug the gradient texture into the color ramp, plug color into factor. And in this case, that looks really cool. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and flip the color ramp, go from linear to constant, and then bring it over till you start seeing black. See where black is? Bring it till you stop seeing black. And that is now, um, now they're working harmoniously. Then you can bring this in if you'd like and then play with the effect. And then here, you can just bring up that strength and you can bring up the strength of this one as, as well. And now we have the transition effect. It looks super cool. And that is how it's built. And you can also add two other levels of animation. You can play with it here. You can play with it here. And this doesn't really do much. It just goes up and down. So you can add extra levels of animation if you want to. Figured I'd provide that option for you guys. What I'm gonna do now is we're just gonna go ahead and animate this. So let's bring it uh, let's bring it right up here. Get a timeline. I'm gonna give myself 100 frames. Won't really even need them. And then right over here, actually in your preferences, make sure in the animation tab your interpolation is set to linear. I'm gonna bring the X location over till we can't see it. I'm gonna hit I and we're gonna go 40 frames and then we're gonna bring it over till you can't see it anymore. Hit I. And now it's done. Transition effect, all done. You can make it quicker, you can make it slower, you can make it do whatever you want. Uh, what we're gonna do now is, um, well, we're really done. So we can go ahead and just set up our camera and get this to render. And my original animation that's on uh, Patreon, 
there is some extra frou-frou. I'll show you guys kind of a basic idea around that. So I'm gonna hit G, I'm gonna get my camera, hit Control Alt Zero, snap that to view. And then in my original one, I added a floor. So we'll just get a really big floor and apply that scale. We're gonna go to the render, render view here. So here on this floor, let's go ahead, bring the world brightness to black. And then let's get in a, let's get in a, uh, where are we at? Let's get a point light here. Really the tutorial's done, you can click away now. But if you wanna add just a little bit more stuff here, like in mine, do that, make it slightly blue. We're gonna go here to the world icon and get in some principled volume and then bring that to your heart's desire. Now in my original animation, now if you're adding volume, first off, you're gonna to have to go back to the shading tab and bring up the brightness of everything, like this and like this. Okay, now in my original animation, I actually used a material from Real Time Materials, which is gonna be in the surfaces category. I used surface six, I applied that. I applied that to the ground, and then if you bring that scale up, it creates this kind of cubic looking effect here on the ground. And then you can play with your roughness like that. Then you can play with the roughness scale. So it's gonna add this really cool effect. Uh, but if you don't have real time materials, that's totally cool. You can just go ahead and get kind of a basic material or watch some of my other shading tutorials. Um, I'm gonna give it like a metallic material and bring the roughness down something like this. And then uh, on this point light, I'm hit G, bring it up and bring up that power there. In the camera icon, uh, I am gonna go ahead and bring my uh, contrast to medium, even high contrast, something like that. So let's go ahead, we need to add some compositing effects here and then we'll be done. So I'm gonna hit render, render image. Now we're here. Let's go here to the compositor, click use nodes, shift A and get a viewer node, bring that over and then hold down shift and we're gonna go here to a, uh, we're gonna get in a glare node. It's gonna do that. What we need to do is bring the streaks down to two and then you can bring that iterations to three, that fade up, that's a little bit too much. And then if you bring that color mod up, it's gonna break it up to give this really cool effect. And then you can bring your mix down, which is like your opacity and that's gonna create that. And last thing, we're gonna get a lens distortion node and then I like jitter. So if we turn on dispersion and then we turn on jitter, it's gonna introduce noise. You can see the best way to see it is we zoom in here. See that? I'm gonna turn off jitter. It's a smooth look, right? Bring in jitter, add some noise to it, makes it look a little more organic. I just like the way it looks. If you don't like noise, that's totally cool. You don't have to do it, but that adds this really nice organic effect. We, we're done. Let me show you how to export this and we'll be on our way. Uh, so, so click on the printer icon right here. I'm gonna keep it at 1920 by 1080. Go ahead and select your file location here. Go from PNG to FFmpeg video, uh, encoding to MP4, and then medium quality to perceptually lossless. Render, render animation. And when you're done, you're gonna have something really cool similar to mine. Um, on my file on Patreon, I added some camera shake, added a floor, added some volume. So you can check out that file if you're part of the Patreon. Um, also check out Real Time Materials. All that stuff just really helps me do this for a living and make more tutorials. Uh, but with that being said, I will see you guys in the next tutorial.